Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Western Office of the Department of Cultural Resources. This is uh, an occasion that I find uh, very pleasing and uh, symmetrical. Uh, when uh, the Department of Cultural Resources first approached the federal government about uh, taking possession of this building, uh, we did it under a federal preservation program. Uh, this building, as you, many of you know, is on the National Register of Historic Places. And this was 1996. It's been a while. And uh, our original intent uh, for this building, other than to have our Western office here, and we've had a Western office in, in Asheville since 1978, uh, was for an archives and, and records uh, uh, program. Uh, so this week, we've had two major events here in this building. Secretary Carlisle and I have been here since Wednesday. And the, the first two days, we spent uh, at a meeting of the Southeastern State Historic Preservation Officers. We had eight states here, including North Carolina. And they met right in this room and all through this building. And right now, as we talk, they're touring Biltmore. Uh, so they have a lot to see when they get to Biltmore, obviously. Uh, and then today, of course, we have the opening of the Western Regional Archives. So as I said, there's a pleasing symmetry to how all of this has come about. Uh, I don't have to tell you that it took us till May 2011 to open this building. And uh, I know we have at least one or two legislators here. And they know what the budget crises have been. And we've also had, uh, we had funding for it two or three times and then a hurricane would come or recession would start and they'd pull the money back. But in any event, we, we were uh, very pleased to open the building in 2011. And then uh, I, I must give Secretary Carlisle uh, credit for pushing us over the, the finish line to open the Western Regional Archives because of the budget cuts we've had, uh, positions that we had earmarked for this program and uh, archives had been cut. Uh, however, uh, through uh, some uh, wonderful uh, planning and foresight by our former state archivist, um, Dick Langford, in 2009 we were able to pass an archives and records management fee and that's generating a lot of money that we would have lost in appropriations. In fact, we did lose in appropriations. And using uh, revenue from that, uh, Secretary Carlisle encouraged us to go ahead and move forward with opening the Western Regional Archives. And uh, Linda, we appreciate uh, all your support. Uh, let me just recognize a few folks on our staff here. Um, would uh, all of the Folks that work in the Western office, please stand and be recognized. I'm not going to name all of you. You're going you're to meet some of them later. And then any of our other uh, uh, staff members from the Department of Cultural Resources, uh, many of whom have come up from Raleigh, uh, Andrea, yeah. Christian from Thomas Wolf. So we have our, our state archivists and our state historic sites uh, represented as well. Uh, it's now, uh, oh, I also have one other person I want to recognize. Hal Kiner, stand up. <laughs> Hal Kiner um, is the former archivist at Appalachian State University. And um, he was on our State Historical Records Advisory Board uh, for many years. I lost track of the years, probably a dozen anyway. Uh, and we worked him to death and he finally decided to get off that board. But uh, one of the things that we've done uh, with Hal, one of the programs we had was the Traveling Archivist Program. And Hal literally traveled from Manny to Murphy. Uh, <laughs> Manny to Murphy. I just invented a new town. Uh, I bet you mountaineers didn't know there was such a town. But in any event, Manny out to Murphy, too many M's in there. Uh, Hal did a great job for us. Uh, he visited over 40 repositories all over the state. Uh, we're into phase two of that. Uh, I'll have to check with Sarah. I don't know who's going to be doing that uh, kind of travel, but uh, I'm sure she knows. Uh, so, Hal, we're, we're very pleased uh, that you're here. And I think Millie Barbie's here. Now, Millie, you stand up, please. Yay. Millie. 
is a longtime member of the North Carolina Historical Commission, and she never forgets to remind us about Western North Carolina in the mountains. <laughs> and she actually has a place for me at, her, at West Jefferson that I stay, so it, it works out pretty well. So it, she won't let me forget. Uh, so uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, the Secretary of the Department of Cultural Resources, Linda Carlisle. And let me just say very briefly, she's been a great Secretary of the Department of Cultural Resources. We are so fortunate to have had her leadership for the last four years. And despite all the budget cuts, uh, she has a great record of accomplishment in this state, not just in history, but in the arts and in libraries. And last night she told me she's going to go and testify before Congress. So obviously people at the national level recognize the work that she's doing. So Linda, we welcome you. Good morning, everyone. We told all those folks from those eight states that it was always this beautiful in Asheville. So if you see any of them, make sure you keep that story going. I, I think a lot of them are looking for jobs up in this area now, uh, and we'd like to have a few of them. Uh, I know there are a couple of other folks I wanted to mention. Uh, Jill Lieberman, Jill. Where are you? Jill's in the back. Jill has just recently joined the governor's staff, and she's the governor's representative here in Western North Carolina. Jill, we're delighted to have you. Thank you for coming out this morning. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Jill. And one of our most favorite supporters who, um, if, if Millie reminds us about the West, this lady works on behalf of the West as hard as anyone I know, and that's Representative Susan Fisher. Susan, thank you for being here. And, you know, I appreciate Susan and those other uh, legislators who live in this part of the state and beyond. When I travel back and forth here and I realize the kind of commitment it takes to serve in Raleigh and to make that trip, and I've, uh, I've actually talked to Susan at times when she's been on that, on that road making that trip. I was expecting a couple of other of our legislators, Representative uh, Rapp and um, uh, who else? Patsy Keever. Jane Wilden, I just want to, anyone that I've not, that I'm not seeing, okay, thank you for being here, thank you for being here, and I just learned this morning, I entered, I met her son, David? Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Um, uh, Jonathan is actually doing a research project on Black Mountain College, I believe, and was expecting he was going to have to go to Raleigh to do his research, and uh, he has good news. Uh, he, <laughs> he has good news. He's going to be able to do it right here. Well, I want to tell you that uh, I've said to a couple of folks that it seems to me that uh, when I came on board in 2009, in a very short period of time, I realized about a lot of the dreams and the hopes and the vision that people within this department had for things that they wanted to get accomplished. And as Jeff has just pointed out, this building, which was still in the dream state at that point, was one of them. And so it was wonderful to be here and to open this building, what, a year and a half ago now? Uh, and this, the, you know, we opened this building and the third floor was vacant. But there was a vision for that third floor. It was a vision that, in fact, we would be able to open up the Western Archives office. So this is absolutely uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to be here and to have all of you with us to celebrate this. I think it is not just uh, the opening of an office, the having of archives on the third floor. I think it's a statement about the fact that we are bringing services and we are bringing our expertise to play in this part of North Carolina. It's an important part of our state. And I truly, I understood before and I truly understand today that it's pretty easy to feel like you are distanced from Raleigh. Uh, and so I have to tell you, I was like a little giggly girl as I pulled up on Wednesday and I came down Riceville here and I saw our sign. <laughs> I've actually stopped and took pictures of the <laughs> sign so I can take it back and show it to folks because it was like, yes, it's the presence. Yes, we've had people here, we've had staff here working for many years, uh, but it's sort of been hidden. And so now this wonderful building, this great location, and the range of services that we are able to provide here in Western North Carolina is just wonderful. Jeff Futz is the manager of this Western office, and Jeff, I thank you and all the staff who so passionately believe in the work that they are doing and the services they are providing. When, when I think about um, archivists 
and I'm not sure I even knew what an archivist was before I came into this job. But when I think about them, I think it's easy for us to think about them in terms of preserving and protecting and having things filed away very neatly and uh, getting out the white gloves and looking at them. But what I've come to greatly respect is the focus that our state archivist and our division has on accessibility. It's the accessibility at the end of the day that really makes the difference. I believe that Thomas Jefferson, among his many talents, was also an archivist at heart. This is what he said, let us save what remains, not by vaults and locks which fence them from the public eye, by, by, but by such multiplication of copies as shall place them beyond the reach of accident. Hal, I think that's much of the work you're doing. I am so proud of the Traveling Archivist Program. It is a means by which our department and our experts are bringing their talents and their skills to smaller organizations all across North Carolina. And Hal was telling me that he's been in over 40 counties, I think over 60 some individual entities, small entities that don't have the expertise I was visiting um, a location yesterday that was talking about that they are starting up an archives, and I said, let me suggest this. Call our staff. Get off on the right foot from day one. It'll be much easier, and we have the expertise to help you do that. So I'm very proud that our people are reaching out, and I think that program is just a fabulous example of that. North Carolina is absolutely blessed with a rich history and a wonderful array of resources that help us to tell our story, and clearly the Western Regional Archives is here to help do that, to reflect the culture and the history of Western North Carolina. I want to say a big word of thanks to Dr. Jeffrey Crow for his superb leadership in the Division of Archives and History and in his service as Deputy Secretary. I can tell you that he has been uh, right by my side since the day I came on board and his, his wonderful leadership, his calm approach, and his very good judgment has served both me and the department very well. He is retiring as of September 1, and while I hate it for me, uh, I'm very delighted for him that after 38 years in this wonderful department that he's going to get a chance to go off and do some other fun stuff. He tells me I've really gotten in the way of his golf game for the past four <laughs> years, and I'm very grateful that he allowed me to do so, but Jeff, thank you so much for your wonderful leadership. And of course, I also want to recognize our state archivist, Sarah Coates, whom you'll hear from a little bit later, and her predecessor, whom Dr. Crow mentioned, Dick Lankford, for their vision and their commitment to giving these collections a home here in Western North Carolina. And I want to recognize Heather South. Heather is our new addition here as our Western archivist. If you haven't met her yet, I understand she was a media star last night, so if you didn't get a chance to see her, I told some folks that I've never seen a film crew following someone so doggedly yesterday. I sort of stood over in a corner and watched. I'm not sure. She said she wears, what was it, Oda to, to History. So <laughs> that gives you just a hint of who Heather is. But she's doing such a great job already. But let me tell you something that particularly excites me. She already has volunteers. She already has volunteers here working. I think she told me yesterday she has one individual who's coming in, I think it's three days a week, working six to seven hours a day. And if I know Heather, she'll have her in here five days a week pretty soon. So she's also just doing a great job. Is that, is that volunteer here? Stand up and get a round of applause. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Everywhere I go, I tell people this department could not operate without volunteers, whether it's our archives 
it's our historic sites, our museums, you name it. Our volunteers really make the difference, so thank you so much. And Heather, thank you for engaging people to get excited. We only have one staff person here, so she's got to expand herself. I want to speak just uh, very briefly about several of the significant private collections that are being moved here from the State Archives in Raleigh, and they will form the core archival collection here in Asheville. And among them, and I know all of you already know, the Black Mountain College papers and the private collections related to the college, the Blue Ridge Parkway Photograph Collection, the Appalachian National Park Association papers, and I just have to say a huge um, word of thanks to noted Black Mountain College scholar and author Mary Emma Harris who is here with us today. Mary Emma, please stand up. Her work over a very long period of time is what has brought an incredible addition to this collection. I told her this morning that uh, I understood that she had our staff who went up to New York uh, on a Sunday so the traffic wouldn't be so bad to pick up and she said it was a wonderful relief but I can tell you that Mary Emma has also been very focused on the fiduciary responsibility that she feels to this collection to make sure that if this was given to the state of North Carolina that it was going to be treated with the respect and the care and she also wanted to make sure that it was accessible. That's been a core mission. I had the privilege of meeting with Mary Emma first, I think back 2009, maybe early 2010, as we were talking about making this. And so I was thrilled to hear that the truck had gone up and come back. And we're delighted to have you here. She says it's a relief to have all, all of this out. But I know it's also like birthing a baby. And now you've sent it out into the world. And we are very, very grateful and very appreciative. I can tell you that the work that is done here builds and documents the cultural infrastructure of Western North Carolina, and that's something that we should all be very proud of. This infrastructure is so important to our historians, our researchers, our students, and I can tell you also to economic developers. Most of you know that as I talk about all the wonderful work in the Department of Cultural Resources, I remind people about the economic impact and the impact that it has for those economic developers who are looking to attract new businesses and attract people. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that as we're talking with folks, that they're going to look around this community, they're going to look around Western North Carolina and decide, is this a place where I could see myself living, not just bringing my business, because it's not just that business, it's the individuals. And they've got to decide that this looks like the kind of place where they want to be. They want to see a vibrant downtown. They want to see a community that has many things happening and going on, a strong arts and cultural uh, community that's here that's vibrant and engaging. I believe Western North Carolina has that, both in our larger cities here and our small communities. And yesterday I saw some, some of those smaller communities I hadn't had a chance to visit. I now know where Bat Cave is. <laughs> and, uh, but I can tell you that as you travel here and you meet the people and you see what's happening, we can all be very proud of. The Western Regional Archives celebrates the life and times of the people and places of this part of our state. Filmmaker and documentarian Ken Burns of Public Television's Civil War fame was asked, how important is the preservation of history in the recalling, uh, the preservation of place in the recalling of history? And I think his answer to this is very telling. He said, it's absolutely critical. We strain to listen to the ghost and echoes of our past, and we have an obligation to maintain these places, to provide these sanctuaries, so that people may be in the presence of forces larger than those of the moment. The Department of Cultural Resources, Cultural Resources, Resources is half of our name, and today we're opening up wonderful range of resources in Western North Carolina. We are grateful and proud and delighted to do that and really thrilled to have all of you here with us today. Thanks so much. It's now uh, my pleasure to introduce Dr. Brian Butler of UNC Asheville who is a noted Black Mountain College scholar. So we look forward to hearing your remarks. Well, actually, I think I'm more to help 
Black Mountain College scholars and, and just a cheerleader <laughs> for, for Black Mountain College, the museum and all that. Um, following that, so I'm academic. I'll apologize. It may be, sound a little more academic than the first two, but I'll do my best. Um, so thank you for, for inviting me. Um, I think uh, Heather and Jeff especially. Um, people I think of as friends, Jeff for a long time, Heather. You know. um, it's a great honor to be here and say a few uh, words and I'm going to talk uh, about the Black Mountain College part of it, which thrills me. Uh, how, how, what a great moment to have it arrive here in uh, Western North Carolina. Um, of course, around the region is, is, is known for an incredible rich history of art and culture. Um, and it's great that it has its own archives now. That's really exciting. Um, but, and I, I applaud uh, members of the government um, in this really tough time to actually make it happen. I think that's huge. I appreciate it tremendously. Um, the history around here is remarkable. Um, yet, uh, I think sometimes uh, its full significance is often underestimated. Uh, and um, it bears repeated emphasis, and I have to read a little bit here, um, that Western North Carolina was a primary location for some of the most important developments of international culture for the last 100 years. Uh, and uh, it's no exaggeration to claim that Western North Carolina, maybe it's a little exaggeration, I know it isn't, um, uh, through the events at Black Mountain College uh, was uh, central to the development of, of the most significant international movements in the educational practices, the art, design, music, literature, and architecture um, this, of the contemporary world. I mean, it's central incredibly powerful. Mary Emma would, of course, agree with this. Alice would agree with this. Connie, I think we know this. Um, just a few specifics, right? Uh, this area was the site of the arrival and development of the Bauhaus tradition in America. That's just giant, right? Uh, it's uh, a functioning exemplar of John Dewey's educational uh, theory of ideas on uh, education and democracy. This is huge. Um, uh, the location where uh, Robert Rauschenberg's paintings inspired John Cage to compose four minutes and 33 seconds. That's huge. Uh, and location where Buckminster Fuller uh, uh, did his supine dome, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, where we can accurately say that therefore Black Mountain College was a location of uh, early and really important beginnings of, call it sustainable design. Right. right here in, in Western North Carolina. Um, Vincent Black Mountain College were surprisingly an important force in the relocation of the cultural capital of the world from Western Europe to the United States. Our little town right here, even Oteen. Um, in this sense, uh, Western North Carolina has an essential place in the history of how the United States became the preeminent cultural location in the world today. While it lasted only a few years, its continuing influence is an American success story of the highest order. Um, for instance, Black Mountain College has a key was a key location in the development in abstract expressionism, uh, which often is thought of as the first truly American art movement. Um, it's also a um, source of key developments in American sculpture, music, architecture, and crafts. Uh, equally important were the Black Mountain poets. Um, and if it, it has been claimed, um, plausibly I guess, that the term postmodernism was coined by Charles Olson at Black Mountain College. If we were actually living in the postmodern world, we could argue over that. I'm an academic, I like arguing over stuff like that. Um, uh, then our contemporary world was first described correctly at Black Mountain College. Um, with the Black Mountain College archives in Western North Carolina, people can see firsthand uh, documents and artifacts that tell of this amazing story. Uh, the primary documents from the college, faculty, and alumni are a stunning resource for historians, art critics, and theorists of contemporary education. The Duberman materials make this archive even more valuable, and adding the amazing materials that arrived, when did they arrive? Monday? 
uh, of Mary Emma Harris. Um, that's, that's incredible, Black right? Mountain College, Black Mountain College Project Materials. Project Materials, right, thank you. Um, just strengthens the wealth of, wealth of the information. Um, <coughs> what a great set of resources for Western North Carolina to offer scholars, right? <laughs> and here you are. Um, as a representative of the Black Mountain College Museum and Arts Center and of UNC Asheville, I think the addition of the Western State Archives as creating our own Black Mountain College Research Triangle in the mountains. So, um, with Asheville's ascension as an art destination, uh, we should recognize the Black Mountain College legacy as a unique opportunity for the region. Uh, Black Mountain College, a famous experiment in liberal arts, hugely successful in the furthering of the arts, was here. UNC Asheville, the state's designated liberal arts university, is here. And the Black Mountain College Museum and Arts Center, the only museum solely dedicated to the history and continuing relevance of the college, is here. Um, and now the incredible archives are here. Right? While this is a truly a matter of world history, it is our state's tradition, and it's our location right here in Western North Carolina. It's rightfully lo the location for BMC studies. Uh, I applaud everyone who brought this about. This is, this is just great. Um, it is highly significant. Um, with such a fertile tradition to work with, the future possibilities are exciting. So much more could be listed, but I'm trying to keep it nice and short. Um, but suffice it to say that our region's significance in shaping cultural his history cannot be overestimated. And thanks to the efforts of so many committed people, uh, this legacy will be visible and available for future generations to appreciate. And that's great. Thank you, Brian. I think you've met the test of a Black Mountain College scholar. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Angie Chandler, who's the director of the Blue Ridge National Heritage Area. And Angie's been a great partner for the Department of Cultural Resources, and we're very pleased to have her here this morning. And uh, she actually has one of her staff people who has an office in this building. So uh, Angie, we look forward to your remarks. Good morning. This is really a momentous day for Western North Carolina to be able to have uh, the archive office here and to be able to provide uh, our communities and our, uh, with an opportunity to provide materials here that will ensure that we have at our fingertips for the folks here in Western North Carolina to have the history and culture of our mountains and foothills preserved. It really does make a statement here uh, to those of us in the West, as Millie will attest to, we sometimes do feel like we're left out over here, but I think this is a tremendous boost um, to that relationship. The Blue Ridge National Heritage Area Partnership, through our federal authorization, is charged with protecting and preserving, interpreting and sustaining the heritage assets of Western North Carolina for 25 counties that are called the mountains and foothills. We truly are a, a fertile ground of history, culture, our agriculture, natural heritage, our Cherokee heritage. And we're one of the few places, I would say, in the United States who have really been working to keep our traditions alive. And that, again, is why it is so important to have the archives, Western Archives office here to help us in that work. Our grants programs, through our uh, efforts, have supported oral histories, video and print documentaries, exhibits, and bricks and mortar projects that express the unique history of our region and the culture of our region. Now with the archives office here, we have the opportunity to have these projects that we have worked on preserved within our region making sure that the stories of our people and our land and our culture continue to be shared and protected for future generations, again, right here in Western North Carolina. We're certainly proud to support today's event 
And we're very excited and thankful for our growing partnership with the Department of Cultural Resources. From the opportunity to actually be a tenant in this wonderful historic building to many meetings that we have hosted here and hopefully helped to introduce this facility to our region. Through working with the regional staff on workshops, working with museums, and working to help revitalize the Blue Ridge Music Trail program with the State Arts Council and the department. We look forward to a long-standing partnership and that is what really I think makes things happen here in Western North Carolina is that we do know how to partner and we certainly are pre pleased with this growing partnership with the Department of Cultural Resources and look forward to a many many years of partnership in the future. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, the director of the Division of Archives and Records and otherwise known as the State Archivist, uh, Sarah Kuntz. Uh, Sarah has been in this position since uh, May 1, if I recall correctly. And uh, she's a veteran, though, of the State Archives. She, uh, she reminded me uh, just this week that she started August 6, 1994, right? A little before then. Uh, well, you were trying to get a free lunch out of me, and so you told me it's August. Gee, okay. But in any event, uh, she's worked in the State Archives for uh, 18 years and uh, is uh, nationally recognized for the work that she does in archival uh, collections, especially initiatives in disaster preparedness and in digitization, and uh, serves on the uh, Council of State Archivists. Uh, so, Sarah, we look forward to hearing from you. Good morning. Um, let me begin by thanking uh, Secretary Carlisle, uh, Dr. Butler, and Ms. Chandler for your comments um, already today. Those were very thoughtful and, and um, um, good. They really drive home the importance of, of what we're doing here today. Um, and it is indeed an honor to share a few remarks with you on behalf of the staff of the State Archives. Most of our staff is based in, in Raleigh. Uh, Secretary Carlisle noted that this has been a long project to get the archives up here and the development of the building, as Dr. Crow said, was a long project as well. Um, I was thinking back the other day, I've been involved on and off in the archival component for over 12 years. And at times it has really felt like a long and winding mountain road, like the documentation of the Blue Ridge Parkway that we now have upstairs, the, the building of the parkway. That's what it's felt like. So it is really nice to be here today to see that vision come to fruition in this beautiful facility and add the services of the archives to those that are already offered in this building. And I would like to especially thank Jeff Futch and his staff here at the Western Office for all your help in getting us to this point today. So thank you very much. You've been a big help. Now, Secretary Carlisle has also mentioned uh, the majority of the collections that have already been moved up here, and I would like to once again thank and recognize Mary Emma Harris on behalf of the State Archives. I want to publicly thank her for her recent donation of an extraordinary collection of materials in the Black Mountain College Project Papers. Um, her vision and guidance and research have really been a driving force, I think, behind <coughs> the further development of our holdings on Black Mountain College. Um, she's been a great friend to the archives over the years, and we really look forward to future collaborations with her to strengthen those collections. So thank you. Uh, now a brief word about our head of the Western Regional Archives. Heather South comes to us from another Carolina, but I will not hold that against her. <laughs> um, she fell in love with the archives during an internship at Winthrop University and has been working with historical documents ever since. She has a BA and an MA in history from Winthrop and over 14 years of experience in preservation, archives, and including reference services, conservation services, exhibit design, marketing, and, and grant management. And most recently, she worked as the South Carolina State Archives Preservation Officer. While in South Carolina, she also served as a newsletter editor for the South Carolina Archival Association, treasurer for the Palmetto Archives Libraries and Museum Council on Preservation, and she was a charter member of both organizations. And in 2010, she was the South Carolina Archivist of the Year. Now, I will tell you that state archives can be a, a kind of a chummy profession. We sort of know each other. I particularly know a lot of the archives um, groups in the South. Um, 
and I will, I've, so I've known Heather for a number of years professionally, and I will admit to being thrilled when I heard that the interview team had selected her. I was very pleased. Um, I may respect my colleagues in other states, but I'm not ab above poaching their best staff to come here. So um, a big welcome to Heather to the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> and although she's only been on board for a few months, she has proven to be full of energy and creativity. She immediately went to work uh, organizing the operations of the archives, meeting with cultural heritage groups in the area, um, developing ways really to grow the archives. She's been contributing to our blog, which has been providing patrons with regular updates on our progress towards opening day. And um, we've already heard she's already secured two volunteers, so that's great. And I'd like to recognize uh, Gaynor Mul Mulroney, um, the, our, the volunteer who's here today. Um, so Heather um, has been a fabulous addition to our staff and it really sort of makes me wish that cloning was possible so I had a little bit of that <laughs> extra energy to go around in other places. Uh, early on Heather said to me that she thought we should use this as sort of a tagline for the archives. Western Regional Archives where history has a view. <laughs> now obviously that works very well in a lovely setting such as this but I was thinking about it the other day and in a larger sense I really think that that encapsulates the work of the State Archives to collect, preserve, and make available the myriad views that make up our shared history. In the opening of this archives, we now have a view of the entire state, stretching from our Outer Banks History Center in Manio through Raleigh and now here in Asheville. And unlike many state archives, we really have a very broad collecting mandate. So when we add those private collections and organizational records, photograph collections, and things like that to our stacks, what we're really doing is we are enhancing and complementing our view of history that comes from the public records that we already have. So these, these private materials really, I think, I've learned over the years, they provide that nuance and, and layers to our views of history. And just like at the Outer Banks History Center, I look forward to the further development of these collections to provide that extra color and depth to the history of the western part of the state. And finally, the opening of the Western Regional Archives also gives us a view of a core value within the State Archives and really within the department as a whole, and that's service. Already the staff of the Western Office here provide services to this region through many programs, including historic preservation, archaeology, and records management. Many citizens may not be aware, but one of the major components of our program in the State Archives is not just to make the historical collections available, but we assist state and local government officials with records management issues. This supports open government, transparent government, and as well as it identifies um, today's records that are going to be tomorrow's historical resources. So that's another important aspect to our program. And I'd like to thank our records analyst in the West, uh, Jason Wolf. Is, is he in the room? Okay, he's, he's around the corner for all the services that he shows up to wave. All the services that he provides um, as well to the, to the area. Um, so today I really, I'm pleased to say that Heather and the Western Regional Archives will enhance and enlarge all of the services already offered to this region. So at the State Archives, um, no matter if we're in Raleigh or Manio or, or in Asheville, we are merely the custodians of your view on history, your State Archives. History does have a great view here on the third floor, and we hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and let me, I did forget one thing. I'd also uh, like to really thank today the Blue Ridge National Heritage Area and the Friends of the Archives. Our president, Frank Ward, is in the back, um, and the Black Mountain College Art and or Museum and Art Center for their support of this um, opening reception. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I now invite you to the third floor uh, to see the new Western Regional Archives and for a, a brief ribbon cutting. Thank you. 
directors of the Department of Cultural Resources in totality, uh, and specifically are so pleased and have been supportive of the efforts that have made this possible, including that ARM fee, uh, Archives Records Management fee, that we were able to enact in 2009. And I can tell you that not only would this opening not have been possible, but this department and this division of archives and history would have been decimated by the budget cuts. It's that fee from that year that has really made such a strong difference. And I'm so grateful for them, for their leadership and their support, in not only this area, but in all areas, supporting arts and culture and history in our state. So thank you all three, and thank you for being here. Yay! We're going to cut this ribbon on the Western Archives office, and our tagline is, Where History Has a View. Where History yeah. Has a View. That's right.